Welcome to our last section. This is chapter 11, section 4, and we're going to be talking about wave interaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply something called the superposition principle, and we're going to differentiate or tell the difference between constructive and destructive interference. So what this is is really how waves interact each other. So if one wave is runs into another wave, what happens? Okay, so that gives us these ideas of superposition and constructive and destructive interference. So I want you to just think here for a second. So when a guitar and piano are both being played, okay, do you hear just one sound? Okay, or can you tell them apart? Right? Well, if you think about music, right, we can always tell them apart. And so what this tells us is that waves that interact are not destroyed, okay? So waves are not destroyed by other waves. Okay. So superposition is the effect we get when waves interact, okay? And it's how they add or subtract, okay? And how they combine. What this means is each wave continues on its own path, okay, and they, you can interact with other waves, but the waves are not destroyed. They don't change, they don't get lost because they interact. They're still that wave, but they do interact in certain ways. So let's look at an example of what this looks like. So here is two pictures looking at waves interacting. And basically what is happening is in this picture here, they've taken two water ripples, okay? And then they shined like one color of light on it so that you can see how the waves interact. So as you can see, right, this, this source of the wave here causes this wave and this wave and this wave. And over here where they're not interacting, they just go out in nice little waves, right? But then we've got this wave here also causing all these little circles of wave motion going out. And you can see where they hit each other, interesting things start to happen. So right here we've got a bright spot, and right here we've got a bright spot. But then we also end up with these really dark spots that are darker than this space here. Okay. So what happens is we get waves adding up and subtracting from each other. And you can see it in this picture a little more clearly than this one. This one's actually from your textbook. And here they've made it a little more clear. You can see each circle of overlapping clearly where it overlaps. And you can see these nice white bright areas and you can see these nice dark black areas. And how you get also gray areas when they add up a little bit or subtract a little bit. So this is what it looks like. So these two types of things that I pointed out, these light spots and these dark spots, um, we would call the light spots constructive interference. So this is superposition, where the displacement from equilibrium is in the same direction. So if one wave is waving up and the other wave is waving up, we get constructive interference. Okay? Or we can also get it if one wave is waving down and the other wave is waving down. As long as they are in the same direction, it is this constructive interference. Destructive interference, on the other hand, is when the displacement from equilibrium is in the opposite direction. So if one wave waves up and the other is waving down, okay, or if one wave is waving down and the other waves up, these both give us destructive interference. And the destructive interference would correspond to the dark spots where we didn't see anything on the last picture. So let's take a look at what that looks like with just one wave. So these are pulse waves examples. Okay, but the same thing happens with periodic waves also. So here if we look, we've got this wave traveling this way and this wave traveling this way. And they're going to run into each other. And this X part here is just telling you that, that they have the same amplitude, but the negative means it's in the opposite direction. So when they run into each other, basically they add up. So you get negative X and X is zero. So they actually flatten out. Okay. Then the wave continues on its own. So see, it was not destroyed. Even though you get nothing here, that wave is still there. It's just adding up to zero currently. But they will keep traveling on their own. So now if they're in the same direction, okay, both of them are positive x, and again they have the same amplitude and they run into each other, then where they overlap, we're going to suddenly get an amplitude that is twice as tall because we've added up both the amplitudes. Okay. Then again, neither wave is destroyed. They don't just like suddenly stop or disappear. Then both waves will separate and keep going on their way in different directions. 
So this side is an example of destructive interference. Okay, and this side is an example of constructive interference. Now, if we look at a periodic wave, the same thing can happen. So you can imagine that this is the equilibrium point going through this wave and through this wave too. And you can see here, this one is going up and this one is going down. This one is going up, this one is going down. And they're all lined up like that. So because when this one is up, this one is down, right, these two here or these two, they cancel each other out and we end up with a flat line. So even though we really have two waves happening, they're destructively interfering to get nothing. Okay, so this one again is an example of destructive interference. Okay. And then our other one here is constructive interference. Again, we can imagine the equilibrium line here running through the center. Okay, and it'll run through the center of this one too. And if you were to check it out, this one goes the same direction as that one. This one goes down at the same time that one goes down. And so what happens on both sides now is they both add up to be twice as tall or twice as tall that way. Okay? So they're adding up because their peaks are in the same place. So this one, again, is constructive. So we can actually have um, waves that are not completely destructive but just make it a little bit smaller. Or we can also have waves that are not completely constructive and just make it a little bit bigger. They don't always have to perfectly line up. They could be, whoops, they could be just off a little bit and still add up more than they were before. The last thing I want to point out then is that the examples I've shown you were examples for transverse waves, okay? But in longitudinal waves, this can happen too. So what happens is, if you remember, compression is where particles are closer together, right? So we might have a whole bunch of lines really close like this as a compression. And then the rarefraction is where the particles are further apart. So it might be more like this. So when you have constructive interference with a longitudinal wave, it will increase the amount of compression or rarefraction. Okay, so that means the space between them will get bigger. So if it's constructive interference, these particles might get even further apart than they were. Okay, and these ones will get even closer. So it increases the amount of compression or rarefraction. Destructive interference, though, okay, it will decrease the amount of compression or rarefaction. So these ones will spread out a little bit more. Right? And these ones will get a little bit closer together than they were before. Okay? So you can see as you look at them, here's their normal difference. Right, If they destructively interfere, now this blue line and these blue lines, the spaces between them aren't as different as they were before. Or it might even go back to completely neutral. But constructive interference increases the differences. So these are way closer and these are way farther. So the difference between those two red lines are bigger than they were previously. And then the last thing, and this one is really for transverse and, uh, excuse me, and longitudinal waves, is complete destructive interference. Complete destructive interference results in no compression or rarefaction of the particles. And that is true on the slide we looked at just a minute ago where we had the two waves and they were opposite and we get one single line. That is complete destructive interference. And you can have that same thing here too. Just instead, all our particles would just be evenly spaced with no compression or rarefaction. All right. That is the end now of chapter four, excuse me, section four. And we are done with chapter 11. So please let me know if you have any questions in class, and I will see you there.